Hey guys, so today we're going to do a tutorial walking you through some of my favorite little moments from this animation that uh, we created recently for a church who was doing Ain't No Grave as an, an opening song, uh, and so they needed a, needed a lyric video. And this is a cool song uh, adapted from a Johnny Cash song uh, by Bethel and Molly Skagg. So I'm going to go through some of this and show you how I built it, um, at least go through as much as I can. There's, there's a whole lot in this project. Um, but I'll, I'll go through as much as I can and show you some little tips and tricks about how we uh, how we created it. So the first thing I did is I just wanted to spend some time researching. They asked, just asked for something dark and grungy. Uh, didn't really throw out too much out there. Um, and so I began looking through some different images. And one of the cool places to go for really cool illustrations that are public domain is uh, rawpixel.com. And they just have tons and tons of uh, really interesting um images and illustrations that you can use so it's worth checking out so I spent some time pulling images probably a good part of the day just finding really cool images that I might could use um, different flowers and uh, some skulls and um, trumpets and all kinds of stuff so pulling all those together and started trying to brainstorm what this thing was going to be um, I knew I had the idea and I knew I wanted to use these um, graves sort of crumbling and exploding during the courses as sort of the main theme um, but then built around that was a bit more stylized. So the first thing I did is I needed to build the background and figure out what the color was going to be and, the, and that overall uh, grainy look. So instead of just throwing a black color back there and throwing some grain on it, I, I had one of the images that I grabbed was from this site and it was this cool picture of this world. And so I opened it up in Photoshop and began just cutting out the background because I really liked the different... Um, just some of this this color that was in here and these little imperfections in the images. Um, so I just went through with a stamp tool and started painting out all of this other stuff. And I'll go through just a, how to do that really quickly without painting out the entire image. So uh, let's have Photoshop open up and then we'll do that. All right, so I opened up the image in Photoshop as its original size. I didn't want to drop it into like a 1920 by 1080 document and then start painting it all out. I wanted to do it the full size it was, which was a pretty large file, I believe. So that way I could have a little room to scale it up and scale it down if I needed to. So the first thing I did, uh, again, I won't go through this whole thing, but I'll just show you the technique that I use. So I du duplicated this background image and you can just turn that off for now. So I took my uh, stamp tool or the clone, the cloner tool, I guess. So you can hit S on the keyboard and you get this little clone stamping tool here. And you have a brush that pops up right there and you can resize it with your brackets. And so um, if you hold down option, it gives you this little target and you can click right there. And so basically you're saying whatever's right here, I'm going to paint somewhere else. So I'm basically saying I'm targeting it with my option tool and then I can take my brush over here and I don't, I'm not holding down any keys or anything. I can scale my brush down and start painting out some of the image. So I'm taking the texture from over here and painting it over here. Um, so it's a, a nice little tool to uh, clone some of your backgrounds without just painting over it or you know adding the color sometimes I would use um, one of the I think it's like a healing tool so with this band-aid I use this healing brush tool which also works pretty well so it kind of works the same way I feel like it just kind of takes some of the um, image around it and and tries to take its best guess at what the uh, image to be so anyways I worked through this entire image going through this entire thing and painting out as much as I could here to get this background image. And so eventually I got to here where I have this dark texture that you can see right there. So it took some time, but it, it finally worked and it just created a really nice texture. So I brought that into uh, After Effects and we will kind of build, we'll sort of rebuild this a little bit to show you how some of these things are set up. So let's make a new composition and we'll just call this tutorial. We'll do 1920. 1080 all this stuff here is fine with okay and so then I drug in that I just imported that file I believe it's under animation elements here let's see dark texture right there drag that in and boom there's my texture already it's looking really nice the problem is if I'm gonna add let's scale that down to fit the composition so the problem is if I'm just gonna start adding text to it it's gonna look very still like nothing's going on and it's kind of boring right so how do I give this a little bit more character? So the way I did that was I have a something I set up a long time ago that I use to add a lot of movement when there's not a whole lot going on. So it almost feels like a, a flip book or, um, you know, a sort of stop motion vibe. And so uh, what I use is a After Effects file that I built a while back. And I'll show you that really quickly. So I'm going to import 
just the After Effects file that I built. So I'm gonna do Command I, and I believe I call it like Paper Jitter or something. Let's see. So I have a little compositing folder that I keep a lot of things that I use often. Uh, so let's see where I can find that. So Paper Jitter background. So I can just click on this After Effects file here, and it flies in. Inside of it, it just brings in this entire folder, so I can open this folder up. And there's a bunch of stuff in here I need to delete, so just ignore that. But if I'm going to click on this background too, I'll show you what's happening. So in here, there's this piece of paper, and it is moving. It's not really moving. It's just a bunch of copies of that same piece of paper happening very fast, but they're all flipped and rotated just slightly so that you get this vibe here. So I'll zoom in so you can see it. I'll render out just a little bit of it. So it's the same piece of paper. It's just you're going through almost frame by frame and it's a bunch of different images. And I really only did maybe 10 different versions of it. So I would go in and uh, drop my piece of paper in right there. And then I would duplicate that. And really this is only, this is only lasting four frames. And then I would uh, move forward. So I du would duplicate that piece of paper, take that same piece of paper, <clears throat> and then I would rotate it using my rotate tool, or I would scale it up a little bit, or I would uh, right click and do transform uh, flip horizontal, flip vertical. So I just would do a bunch of those randomly. And so you ended up with this um, piece of paper that is just sort of flashing. So I ended up dragging that into my uh, tutorial background here. And I made a few tweaks. So um, I'll show you the one I ended up making. So I can just take that same background. Instead of having that piece of paper, I can add different textures to get different um, effects. And so the background that I ended up using was this background three. So you can see this is the texture that I ended up using, but it's really the same things happening over and over again is I'm just using a different, a different piece of paper and it's duplicating over and over and over again. And so the tutorial comp here, there's my piece of paper. And so I would just do some different blending modes just to get a little bit in there. And so the blending mode that I used for this, let me go take a look really quick and see what I ended up doing here. So I did two different ones. I did a multiply and divide. I just started stacking these to see what they would look like. So I'm going to copy those and just put them in here. Okay, so turn this one off. And so now it's very, very subtle. I don't even know if you can see it, but you can see it's sort of flickering. Took this background here and I clicked on my blending modes and I did a multiply option. Let me turn that back on. And now you can see there's a little bit in there and then I duplicated it again and I did a divide and divide usually takes the whatever is black and makes it white and so you can get a nice um, some nice texture in there, some little white specks and things uh, happening on top of it. So, and then I actually had to offset these a little bit um, because I have a, a divide and a multiply on there, then so they're kind of working against each other. And so if I just take that and move it just ever so slightly, you can see now multiply and the divide is happening sort of separately. Obviously, this is a little bit too much, so I had to dial that way back. So I believe this was 13% on the opacity, and I'm just hitting T. I'm clicking that layer and hitting T, and this was like 55. So then if I watch that back, it's just really, really subtle. Probably even can dial it back even more. But that gives you the idea of how they got that texture. Okay, so this was the basis for my entire project. This is just running in the background the entire time. And you can just tell it adds a whole lot of uh, character to it. All right, so the next thing I need to do was start bringing in some images and playing around with what they were going to look like. So um, let's go back and take a look at the main project here. So we have this snake, we have... Uh, some things here and these these little scenes with the graves are from cinema 4d and we'll go into that in a little bit but uh, let's start with this flower i think this is a good example okay so we have this flower png and that original image was let's go over here take a quick look the original image looked like looked like this here so this was the original image so i went in and cut out this background as best i could ended up doing a ton of uh just desaturating it and, and changing the color a little bit as much as i could in photoshop and ended up with this color here. And again, I'd love to go through all that, but it will be here way too long. So my final image was this, and it's obviously pretty dirty, but I uh, took out that, that off-white background. I um, had to do a lot of painting out a lot of the stuff, and then just desaturated it, added some levels, so I would get this stark black and white uh, color to it. All right, so then I brought that into After Effects, and I just dropped my flower PNG right down here, so you can see it now is inside of this composition. And let's see if anything's happening right here. So not a whole lot is happening in this composition, but the only thing I did is I duplicated that flower um, and cut out the uh, top of this flower and then had it animate just a little bit. 
and I'll show you how I did that. So I just took this, I'll turn this one off here. Um, I took a flower PNG. I'll delete that for now. So this is my main composition and I just cut out the main bulk of the flower by using the mask and I would just take my pen tool and start cutting around this image here. Pretty much going just everywhere except for that flower petal. So I went all the way around, made my mask, and then I can just duplicate that layer, Command D, and I can hit M on the keyboard for my mask tool, and then I can just click on, instead of add, I can click subtract, and that gives me this one. So now, if I solo these out, you can see I have the top of the flower, which is here, and I have the bottom of the flower, which is there. So then I took the top of the flower, I moved my anchor point, which is right here, so I hit Y on the keyboard, took this up here to the top, somewhere around here and then I added a rotation to it by hitting R on the keyboard for rotation clicking that rotation tool so I did the stopwatch so I have this keyframe right here so I can move that down there I can move my playhead back here and I can then rotate whoops let's see I hit W on the keyboard for my rotation tool and I can rotate it like that okay so I did that and that gave me this nice little rotating flower head right so if you go back to your, go back to the tutorial and let's say I drag in that flower composition and I drop it in here, I'm gonna scale it down some so you can see it. It just doesn't quite look right. You know, it's not, the colors don't quite line up and that's where you gotta really spend time on what looks right. So that's cool, I mean, it's moving but it just, it feels disconnected from the background. So how do we make this all one thing? I believe I just did some blending modes on it. So let me go back and double check what I, what I did here. So after cycling through these, uh, Lighten was sort of the best one that blended it through, but the problem is it still isn't quite looking right, and that's because right now it's on top of those background effects that are uh, causing all that jitteriness and grunginess, so I need to just put the flower down below my background, and then you can see it even adds a bit more texture to these flowers and feels like it's sort of on that piece of paper, and you're getting some jitteriness inside of those flowers um, as it animates. So it's looking pretty good. It still didn't feel quite right, so I needed to add a little bit more. I wanted this to feel like sort of distorted, almost like you're watching an old movie. Um, so I needed to add a displacement map. And this is where it can get a little complicated, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So displacement maps are what people use for like glitch effects and things like that. So it just takes uh, the white and black channels of, of in an image or a, a clip or something and, and uses those those colors to uh, di distort your image. So let's talk about how to do that. So the first thing I needed to do was make some sort of composition that uh, contained what the map was gonna be and I just needed some black and white uh, mess to, to use. So what I did is I made a new composition and we'll call this uh, Fractal for now. Uh, I'll just put a different name to a Fractal tutorial. And so I needed to make a new solid. So I went to layer, new and solid. And I know I'm going through this fairly quickly but there's a lot to cover so hopefully you just can pick up some little uh, pieces. All right, so I made a new solid and I went to effect and I believe it's maybe distort. Uh, let's see, noise and grain. That's what we want, noise and grain, sorry. So noise and grain and then fractal noise. And that just gives you this sort of cloudiness and really nothing's happening. Um, it's just sort of stagnant. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. You can change the, the way it looks. There's a bunch of different options here, but we just kept it basic for now. And then we needed this to constantly be moving. So you could go in here and change the evolution to sort of keyframe and just have it do this number. But this is just too smooth and not nearly as, as rough looking. So another way we did it was go to, let's see, evolution options maybe, and then random seed. So random seed is basically just a different variation of what you're looking at. So as I go up, it's, it's just changing, you know, the variation on it. So I wanted that to be moving the entire time. So what I did is added an expression to that, and without going too deep into expressions, you can do tons with them, um, and I ended up, I don't know this stuff by heart, I always have to Google it and make sure I'm doing the right thing, but um, if I hold down Alt and Option and click on that little stopwatch, I can then type in an expression, and again, uh, you can just Google this um, and get a, a whole lot of information on it, but basically I just put time uh, times six, and so it's just multiplying, um, you know, this number over a course of time, something like that. I don't know. Super smart stuff that I don't really understand, but uh, what the internet tells me to do. So it works out. And so what's happening is, is it will constantly just be doing this. It's just changing um, in multiples of six, I guess, uh, at random numbers. And it makes that cool effect. So 
that was all I needed to do that. And then I went back to my, um, go back to my tutorial composition and I'm going to bring that fractal noise in. So that was a fractal tutorial composition. I'm just going to drag it and put it on the top where this is. Doesn't matter as long as it's in your timeline and then you can just turn it off. We don't need it to be on. It just needs to be in the same timeline. So then I went to my flower and I needed to add a displacement map to this. So I'm going to go up to effect and I'm going to go down to distort and displacement map. And that's going to add a new effect on this. And I'm just going to delete this old one. So then you need to tell it what, what map do you want it to use? So I want it to use the fractal one. So I'm going to click on the, where it says flower and I'm going to go to fractal. And so now it's, it's pulling information from this uh, layer. So then I just changed this number, I believe to one and it's pretty low. So if I just render this out, it's taking that information that is happening inside of that fractal tutorial and distorting it on this image. So it's very, very subtle, but it, you can see it's sort of distorting this image um, just a little bit. So you can change that number a good bit to, um, you know, increase the intensity of it if you want, but it made it just feel a little bit more like it's this, it's on this piece of paper and it's you're going through quick frames or some sort of stop motion animation to it so it adds a whole lot more interest to uh, the animation the next thing i did is i added a expression to the opacity of this uh, flower so I'll click on my flower layer hit t on the keyboard to reveal the opacity and then i'm going to hold down alt and option and click on that stopwatch and again it gives me this little option here to type in an expression so i'm going to type in wiggle and i'm going to do a parentheses and we're going to put a number in. So the first number I'm going to put in is sort of the frequency that I want it to change. So we're going to say maybe a 10 Then I'm going to put a comma. And then the next number is more of the amount. So maybe that's a percentage. I'm not sure exactly what those numbers are, but my assumption is this is maybe frames and the percentage show uh, the frequency you want it to move and then the amount. And then I'm just going to click off of that. And if I render that out, you can see now that the flower is sort of flickering compared to just being um, you know, if this was empty, it would just be, um, you know, it's sort of flickering because of that, that texture in the background. But if I add that expression to it, it even adds more flicker to it. So it feels like a old timey movie or something. Okay. So that's a pretty cool effect. Again, wiggle is about the only one that I have memorized for expressions. Again, you can Google tons of information on those and do all sorts of fun stuff. So, so this is really that effect right there is what I use for almost every layer in this composition. So the random trees and the flowers and even the text um, has that same effect on it. So there's a displacement map on top of that layer using that same fractal um, noise uh, and then um, that opacity uh, flicker on there to create that that movement. So that is how you really added a ton of a uh, ton of style to the entire project by just putting that on every single layer. So let's talk about camera movement a little bit. And I'm not going to go through this too much, but uh, if you see in the main video, it's sort of uh, in this little forest scene, it sort of kind of travels through this 3D forest here and then comes up on this flower. So how do we do that? And this, I'm just going to cover a little bit on 3D without going too much into it um, with inside of After Effects because, you know, there's a lot of other scenes in here that go through that, but we'll just, I'll just give you the basic concept. So go back to my main tutorial and now we need to make this a 3D, um, a 3D scene. So the first thing we want to do is add a camera. So I'm going to go to layer, new and camera. And you can leave all this the same for now. We've made you adjust this in a bit, but this just talks about your camera settings. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's basically saying, hey, you don't have any 3D layers in here, but we'll, again, we're going to fix that. So hit OK for now. And we're going to also add a null object. So I'm going to hit layer, new and null. And I've talked about this before, but basically a null object is kind of like your cameraman. So um, the camera is going to be attached to the null, and this, this object here is going to be where I move the camera with. Um, so we'll get into all that in a minute. I'd also need to make that a 3D layer. So let's talk about 3D layers real quick. So I'm going to take my null object, click on this little cube here, and we're also going to make our, you don't need to do the fractal, that can stay the same. Um, the backgrounds can stay the same. All we need to do is make this flower 3D, and there we go. So I'm going to click on the null. I'm just going to change that to call it movement. And the camera again needs to be connected to that null object and do that with this pick whip, just clicking and dragging and dropping on that uh, null object. So now wherever I move this little box, the camera is going to move too. So you can see now I'm 
moving in 3D space. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit using my camera. And the next thing I wanted to do was build some sort of forest into this. And so without going into too many details, I just cut out some cool uh, trees that were in one of those images. So I found this image here, uh, cut these trees out, uh, inverted the colors and got these nice little trees that you see. So I imported, uh, created those trees as a bunch of different PNG layers and brought them into the animation. So I'm just gonna drag in one here. And this is again, this is just gonna be the overall concept. So now I have this tree, I'm gonna scale it down a good bit. And we need to also make this 3D. Um, so then I want to make this look like a forest. So I duplicated this tree and I had a, a few different variations on the tree, but I needed to make a, a bunch of trees. So I just hit Command D a few times. And then I needed these to be separate in 3D space. So if I go to where it says active camera, click on that and go to left, then I want my trees to be spread out over the 3D space. So right now you can see this flower is my flower layer. So they're all they're all the same in the same spot in space and I don't want that. So I'm gonna take a tree, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit and I'm just gonna push them, push them back a little bit. I don't really wanna move them up and down because again, I wanna create this just like it's a real world. So all the trees would be on the same level ground unless there were some crazy hills or something, but uh, this will just give you an idea. So again, pretend like this is the ground. These are all my trees and my camera is pointing this way, looking at the tree. So I'm gonna go back to active camera and now I have all these trees. Now they're in this perfect row, um, but I need to move these back a little bit. So I'm gonna click and just kind of drag these trees around. And I don't, I don't really wanna scale them up and down because again, they would somewhat appear smaller than others uh, and some would appear bigger depending on how close they are to the camera. So as a very, very fast example, this is sort of how I set this scene up. The flower is obviously way too big, so I'm going to scale that down as well. So I'm gonna click on the flower, scale down. And I also want this flower to be on the same plane as the bottom of the trees. So I'm gonna go back to the left camera here. And this is pretty much the bottom of the tree, so I want my flower to be down here as well, because this would be very small compared to the trees. So I'm gonna go back to the active camera, and now my flower is way down there. So this should, technically be the uh, ground plane. So then I have my camera I can play with. So I'm gonna go up here and use this movement and I'll take my mouse right on top of these little different axes and I can move these down. So now it feels a little more like it's it's in space. Okay, so started out pretty wide. And again, I had a lot more trees, but this just gives you the overall example. And then I hit P on the keyboard for my move tool, clicked on position. So let's say this is my start position. I'm gonna move this down a little bit and I want it to end right in the, the middle of that flower. So I'm going to then use my movement layer and I want to move the Z axis because I want to be pushed into that flower. So I'm gonna click and drag and I'm getting pretty close. Now I'm going to go down a little bit. So I'm just going straight into that flower. And I knew that I was going to transition as I got closer to the flower. So you, start, you know, it's gonna start losing quality because I'm zoomed way into this flower, but it's constantly moving, so it should happen pretty quick. Okay, so now if you watch that back, you can see I'm sort of moving in 3D space. So with all these different jittery things going on, and again, I added to all these layers, I added that same displacement map as well as the uh, opacity flicker to those layers. Boom, so that's pretty cool. Okay, um, I think the only thing I need to do now is I do need to turn off, I think the camera turns on your depth of field by default, so I will just go into my camera settings here and turn off depth of field just because I just, I just didn't want it, and I get more detail in that flower, so make sure you do that. Unless you want depth of field, then, then by all means. But uh, So that was really how I'd set up a lot of the 3D scenes. Um, same thing goes for the trumpets uh, that were happening there in the animation, so if I find those real quick... So these trumpets are set up the same way and the fact that I, I made one composition with the trumpet and then they all animate in and, and fly up like that and they're just pushed back in, in uh, Z space so that they look like they're sort of in this row and you're flying through them. So the only thing I did there was I made one single trumpet. So if I go into this trumpet, you see you have a bunch of uh, trumpets here and they're all just rotating the same way. So I, I built one and then they all did the same thing. So if I hit you on the keyboard, they have this um, animation to them and I did a little wiggle 
So there's a lot of life inside of these trumpets. If you can see, they're sort of uh, constantly wiggling up and down, like they're some someone's someone that we don't see is holding, and which creates kind of a neat effect. So the way I did that was just added added a simple expression to the Z rotation. Again, just hitting uh, hold down Alt and Option, clicking on that stopwatch, and then I add a wiggle of something pretty small there. But I just play with some different numbers to see what I get, and I just wanted a really really subtle wiggle so that it would constantly be moving a little bit and so when you duplicate though that same uh, trumpet once you get it set up once you duplicate it and then move it and just offset them just a little bit then they all wiggle a little bit random and it creates a, a really cool effect so um, super fun there so now let's talk a little bit about the text and how we create uh, just the actual lyrics of the video so inside of the video you have the, the everything going on in the background and then you have the uh, text layers and this is just a composition that is thrown into my main animation so I have this full lyrics here and so if I double click on that all we have are the lyrics right here so what's pretty cool about these is they have you know instead of just doing a fade in fade out they have the, again this painted vibe going on and they reveal and sort of paint on like a brush so the few things going on here uh, that we can talk about so I'll make a new composition real quick and we'll go through how to set that up. So I'm going to click on my new composition layer and we'll just call this lyrics test. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is just make a text layer. So I'm gonna hit Command T on the keyboard. And I also like to see my uh, title and action saved so I just have an idea of where the center of the screen is. So I'm just gonna draw my box here and I'm just gonna type ink no Grave. I'm using titling, uh, titling Gothic FB. You can find that on uh, Typekit, and it's just the uh, the normal version, but it's a uh, black weight, super heavy. So, really nice font. I'm gonna drag this down to the center here. So you could you could do a nice little fade in and, and have it uh, do its thing, but we wanted to create more of a you know just it's being painted on or almost paint splatter to reveal it and while and also keeping sort of a grungy look. So I needed to. You can do this with. There's a bunch of different options out there. You can download different. Um, masks and stuff, but I want to create my own uh, just for fun. So the way you would do that is do that inside of Photoshop and I'll show you what the final result is and then we'll talk about how to make it. So so I'll just drag the image sequence in for now so you can see what's happening. Uh, so this is very, very small. It's just happening over the course of a few frames, but you can see if I render it out, it's just it's a whole bunch of paint layers um, one by one building this big mess. I had to do a few. I had to do a few tweaks uh, to get this just right to reveal just right, and I did that inside of this composition. So I ended up taking my main reveal, and then I added a time remap so that it would stop and just hang on this for a few seconds, um, and then I had to add a few more little things. So, but overall, the way I did that was just went into Photoshop, and I'll make a new document. We'll call this 1920 by 1080, and then I made a new layer. And just started adding some paint brushes on there. So if you're not really sure about how to use Photoshop brushes, um, you can Google all that and how to install those. But I have a bunch of brushes that I used and a bunch of old um, paint splatters down here. There's a bunch of different strokes here. So what I would do whoop, is I would uh, click on a brush and I would use a black color. So I would drag this down pretty dark, dark gray, black. And I would click and make my layer. Probably click a couple times depending on the brush to get even more of a, a darkness to it. So... I would click there and then I would save this JPEG as, you know, just put it in one folder, call it, you know, paint one. And then I would do it again. I would grab some other random brush, scale that down, and then click a few times to get this effect. So I'd do that multiple times. I would then save this as paint number two, add some more brushes, paint number three, save them with just a bunch of JPEGs. And then with After Effects, when you have a bunch of JPEGs that are sort of labeled the same, so paint one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you will, it can it will recognize that as an image sequence, and then you can import that into After Effects as an image sequence. And so that's what this little uh, icon is here. It has a stack of images, and it says paint one through eighteen. So I ended up doing eighteen different random um, paint splotches there to get this reveal. Okay, so then once I put this into my own composition and I have it just right, I go to my lyrics test. And now I can take that same image sequence that I made and drop it in here. And now you can see it just kind of folds out. Problem is I need to use this as a mask to reveal the text. And the way you do that is I'm going to click on toggle switches down here. 
So right under trackpad is where we want to change our options. So uh, you want to make sure that the mask that you're going to use, which is our paint, is on top and the, the, the layer that you want to reveal is on the bottom. So then I'm going to click on where it says none and I'm going to go to maybe Luma matte inverted, I believe. So basically whatever is black will be revealed and whatever is white will be hidden. So I'm going to click on inverted. And now you can see that there's a little bit of some texture inside of our paint or inside of our uh, text there. So now if I watch this back, you can see it sort of reveals that on. And it ends with this kind of grungy look on there. And now we can even have that back up. So right now it just reveals like that. And you could even go slower. So I'm going to right click on this and go to time remap. And time remapping. And it's going to give me some keyframes. And I'm going to figure out right where that finishes right there. So I'm going to click on this little button. And it's basically just locking where this time is. So then I can stretch this out and that little reveal will go very slow. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then I can take the same the same keyframe, copy it and paste it somewhere over here. So maybe around five to six seconds, I want it to disappear. So I'm gonna paste that keyframe. And so now it's just gonna lock in right here. So this nothing's happening between these two keyframes because it's the same timestamp right there. And I'm gonna move to about, you know, six and a half seconds. And I'm gonna take this keyframe, which is the beginning I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it down here. So now the reveal is going to then reverse and go backwards. Just like that. So that's a great way to reveal it. Now you can see it starts, it starts painting back on and that's because I have this keyframe right down here. So I can just delete that one and now it'll stay hidden. So that's a great way to set up some cool text animation because then you can, you know, spread this time out. So let's say this lyric is going to stay up for 10 seconds. I can click this these two keyframes and slide them down here. And now I have it reveal hangs out for eight or nine seconds and then goes away. So that's a great way to set up this. And so really in my main lyric animations, that's the same thing happening over and over again is I have my paint reveal as well as my text layer. You can just see it's doing the same thing over and over again. One shows up, the other one goes away. Pretty much that's the, that's how this entire lyric thing was built. I'm just building the different styles within this. Uh, there's one here that's just a, um, there's no color fill on that text layer, but there is a stroke. So that's how you get that stroke effect by clicking this little, uh, turning off your fill color and then turning on your stroke color, which is back here. All right, let me zoom out a little bit. I don't think there's anything special about the rest of this. Again, just going through that and I would put my uh, audio track down here and then build my text around that dropping that quality and just being able to listen through make sure that the timing is uh, just right that's how the build the text now again we went back into my main composition and i have that same effect on the lyrics um, as that displacement map so that the displacement map is pulling um, again to this fractal uh, noise that we talked about to give it just a little bit of a, a, a wiggly a wiggliness to it okay let's move through this a little bit let's talk about the snake really quick um, there's one little technique I used on this snake that we can talk about. So I'll go into my snake layer. And so this was my main snake layer right here. Um, not a, not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's just a, one of those images that I removed the background and changed some colors to it. But what I did is I added the puppet tool. So I'm going to duplicate my layer just so I can show you what I did. Hit you on the keyboard a few times. Let me just delete this. So now this is just a, a locked random snake layer with a, a transparent background. Um, right there. So uh, the puppet tool is pretty cool to make some really simple animations and I, I'm a I'm a novice at it but uh, I know just enough just to um, do the little subtle thing. So so the next step is I got my puppet tool which is this little pin this little push pin you click there and do the puppet's position and I'm going to click down on the snake on where I think the snake is bending. And I do want to make sure that you know this one's a little tricky because it's is a transparent image and it has a bunch of little holes in it. So as long as you click on the actual image, it should work. And you do want to make sure that your image is, is a PNG file and doesn't have really a background. So this is great for character animation and things. But for me, I just know a little bit about it to where I can do some subtle movement. So I'm just going to click once uh, right on the image. I'm going to do it right on its neck there. It's going to do a few things and do the sort of auto trace and hopefully show me um, my image there. So now it kind of it kind of put a little pin right there and I'm going to keep on moving forward. I'm going to click somewhere down here. I'm just going to add a bunch of different points on where the snake would be bending. Maybe somewhere down here. Maybe somewhere over here. Just going through on where the snake might be bending. 
So now I have these little pins on here and it's just kind of pinned it down. And if I hit you on the keyboard a couple of times, it'll show me all the little keyframes that I made on this. Uh, all these little pins are, are on the snake and they've made keyframes. So if I advance forward, maybe let's say just say 10 seconds. And then I go up here and I can move these pins around. It'll just animate it for me. So um, when I put my mouse on top of those pins that I made, it gives me this move tool and I'm just going to pull it and move it. And you can see that it moves it around. I had to sort of do something different with the uh, head because the, the tongue wasn't quite, didn't quite work into that mesh, but uh, that's okay. So I can just click and move and you can see that it, it moves around the entire image based on where your pins are. So I'll just do a variation on what I had originally from the first pins. Just moving those around pretty randomly. So now if you play that back, it might take a little bit for it to render as it's thinking about a whole lot, but um, it just makes a nice little subtle movie. You can see it sort of moving there, going from this set of keyframes to the next. So there's a ton you can do with that, uh, and it makes for a nice little animation. So that gave the effect that the snake was moving, and then I would sort of move it around within this composition uh, and do a whole bunch of different pieces of that snake and, and cut it out. And so you can see maybe it's about four or five different pieces of that snake, and I um, just spread it around the outside of the frame to give you this cool effect. Okay. So that's really the only unique thing with the snake layer. I thought that might be something interesting for you. There's a, the, the puppet tool is quick to use and it can add a, a nice little uh, touch to your, your project. So the next thing we'll go through real quick before we go into the Cinema 4D stuff is this quick little rose scene. Um, so really this is the same rose duplicated over and over again. So I made one composition where I have uh, all these roses falling in the background. So if I go to the falling roses composition, double click on that. And I have another composition here, Falling Roses Main. Double click on that. And these are just the same rows um, turned into a 3D layer. And then I put a little bit of a small rotation on those. And they're just falling into the space with a position keyframe. So if I go into even these compositions, as I have this single rows just falling down and rotating, right? Not a whole lot to it. I would take this same composition and put it into another composition, which is this duplicate it a bunch of times, move it in 3D space, just like we talked about with those trees earlier, and then they're just kind of falling. Then all those layers are then attached to this null object, and this null object is just moving through space, kind of like the camera's passing through all these uh, falling roses. So you're getting slightly closer to them as you move through, but that's that's really all that's happening is those layers are just moved around in 3D space, and then some of them are, are transformed to flip horizontally so that some are facing left, some are facing right, and they're moving. Okay, then the other uh, flower layer that we'll see if you go back to the main composition is we have uh, this ink reveal that is happening on top of that, the main part of the flower. So I'm gonna click on my layer here. So we have our main flower layer and then it's sort of cut out. I have the top separated from the bottom and then I wanted the this ink reveal to reveal the color of the flower. So this is the same concept that we've talked about already with the, the paint reveal that we made inside of Photoshop for the text. So this is just a black and white ink reveal, just another form of reveal. So I'll show you that real quick here. Is this something you've probably seen before? Um, but it just is a, a blot of ink and it's filling up this white spot. So I would take that, I would drag it in down here and I would have it reveal on top of this flower rose top. And this flower rose top has a, so if I turn this off, you can see it's just this white layer, but then I duplicated that same top of the flower and added a tint to it and changed that white color to a red. So I can make this really whatever color I want. So if I turn this back on, I can make this, you know, something like a blue and it changes that to blue. So pretty cool. So it's using that ink reveal to reveal the top of that flower that has the tint on it. And I'm just using that Luma matte inverted because it's it turns from white to black. So now let's talk quickly about the Cinema 4D setups. I won't spend too much time with this, but I'll show you what I did. Uh, so I built a, a setup inside of Cinema 4D and had these uh, grave tombstones explode and then used the sketch and tune um, option for these lines to create this like animated 
uh, vibe to it. So it, it makes it look like I'm an artist, but I'm really not. So um, let's jump into Cinema 4D and I'll explain this a little bit. All right, so inside of Cinema 4D, this is what it really looks like before it gets rendered out with the different um, effects. So this is that very first scene as soon as that core starts and it just kind of flies through the various um, graves. So what it looks like in the final example is right here. Uh, let's see if I can find it right here. And this is really the, the final look here. So it's it's pretty it's pretty different than what you're looking at, but um, it creates a really cool look. And I'm, I'm a fan of this sketch and tune stuff. So how did I get there? So let me go back to Cinema 4D. And what's happening is I just have a different, uh, I have two different shapes for the graves. And then I have this landscape and those graves are attached to it. So let's go through how to make that real quick. Um, if you're a Cinema 4D user, maybe this is helpful. So I'm gonna make a new composition. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is make my grave shapes. So I'm going to make a shape out of, uh, we'll do a cylinder. And then I'm going to drop this down pretty small, something like this. And I want to cut this in half. So I'm going to go to slice and hit slice. And there, so there's this, this is the top of my gravestone. You can see it right there. And I want to make this editable. So I'm going to hit C on the keyboard. So this isn't really a, you know, one of the, the shape objects. This is more of a mesh that I can move around. So if I'm going to change my display to see the lines here. And what I want to do is stretch out the bottom down here to make it more of a taller. So I'm going to click on my um, little plane tool and then I can click on these various layers right there. Let me zoom in so I can get to it. I just want to select those. I'm holding down shift to select those, those pieces. So I want to stretch this down so that it makes a nice tall tombstone. So I'm going to right click and go to um, extrude, I believe. And then I can just click and drag and I pull it down this way. So now I have this gravestone. I can click on my move tool and rotate this back up. So now I have this nice little gravestone here. Rotate it to 90 degrees. I'm just gonna keep this right in the center. And so then I needed to attach this to a landscape. So then I made a landscape. I went up here, clicked on this and made a landscape right there. And here's my landscape. I'm just gonna scale my tombstone down some to be somewhat proportionate to this landscape. So the next thing I would need to do is move my point on my tombstone to be the very bottom. So I'm going to click on this little viewport up here and zoom into this tombstone right here. And I want to move my, this really the, the anchor point down to the very bottom. So I'm going to click on this little axis tool where I can move it. And I can move that all the way to the bottom. Somewhere on the bottom is close enough. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go back to my main view. And I need to put this into a cloner object so that I have a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to go to MoGraph and Cloner throw this tombstone into the cloner and it's going to make a big line of them and that's all good we could do you know you could think you could do like a grid array or something and, and make a bunch of them but i want to attach them to uh, this landscape so i'm going to click on cloner and i want the mode to be um, objects so i'm going to click on object and then i need to tell it what object i want so i'm going to drag my landscape down into the object um, blank there so now it just throws them on here randomly which is which is kind of cool. Really, I didn't do a whole lot more besides go through some of these seeds to figure out what I wanted. And if I feel like uh, I still need some more, I would um, try to find one that they were there fairly evenly spaced. Um, just again, cycling through these randomly. And then if I needed to add more, I could go in and add the count. I could bump that count up to a higher number. So I'd find one that really worked with what I was going for. And then find a place where my camera was going to move and then just sort of push my camera through these tombstones. Now they're all facing the same way, which is not too bad, but I wanted to randomize that just a little bit. So I clicked on my cloner, went to MoGraph effector and random, and then I don't want them to be floating. So I need to go into the random uh, properties here and just first I just delete these. I just put these back at zero and then I want to change really the rotation. I want to keep the position as is because it it pins it down by that, that anchor point that we moved uh, on the tombstone. But I just want to adjust the rotation. I'm going to click on rotation, and then I can again play with some of these. So you can have them leaning forward and backward, maybe to the side a little bit. But mainly I wanted to adjust this one here so you could see. So that as you move through it, you would get more, a little bit more depth on some of these. Now what's cool with the cloner is you can go into your tombstone and I can make this thicker so I can maybe hit T on the keyboard and let's see if I can stretch that out. There we go. I can get a nice thick tombstone there and adjust all of them. So get a little more depth on those. 
So the next thing I need to do was add a sketch and tune effect to these uh, layers. So um, if I just render this out, this is what you see. You just have a, a plain um, background here as well as your, your white tombstones. And that looks, that looks pretty lame. So I went in and did create new material or maybe new shader and a sketch material. And then it gives you this little sketch material here. I'm just going to drag this and put it on the tombstone. That's going to give you this little box and that's all well and good. So now if we just hit render, it gives us sort of this layout here. And what I wanted to do was turn off some of these options. So you have a bunch of different options here and I had to do a, a pretty good bit of tweaking to try and get this to be just right. So it did take me a while and I don't think my actual final tombstone was laid out quite like this because I had to get rid of some of these inside lines. So let me go back to my main option here. So you can see I had to, to make one of the sides of the tombstone to be a completely flat uh, polygon instead of having all these lines in the background like that because those will show up. But um, ultimately I got to where it looked more like this and this is what I was going for. So um, again, I had to really tweak those, those polygons to get them just right and those objects to get just right to get those lines. And going through several different of these um, options down here with the uh, sketch material is where I would uh, get that effect. And so again, I went into the sketch material and I basically told it uh, I would change my uh, stroke size, um, mess with a lot of these settings going through this, really mess with the stroke size, mess with the thickness, mess with the color, uh, some other things there. And then you can go into your sketch material little tag here and change what the shading is, is I, I wanted um, it to not have, I didn't want it to be white with black shading. I would change it to white and then to make the um, shading actually black or a custom color. And you, you may actually do that in the render settings. So when you add a sketch material, it gives you the sketch and tune option in your render settings that you can go in and change a lot of your settings there. So I'd make my custom color black so that it could um, easily blend with that background that we added inside of After Effects. So then I added my camera. Once I had this whole thing set up, and pushed it through the scene and it worked out pretty well. So then um, I added this vibrate tool, which is a really fun little um, tool inside of Cinema 4D by right clicking, you go to Cinema 4D tags and vibrate and add some of these adjustments. So if I turn this off and watch this back, it's cool and it's all good, but it floats just way too clean going through this scene. But if you turn these things on and adjust your numbers, you get this like weird ghost like floating camera going up and down through the scene pretty cool stuff so that's how I built these first scenes as well as the scene for the uh, cross which I'll open up really quick so inside of here is a whole lot of landscapes uh, going on so let me fly out of my camera here so you have all these different landscapes stacked on top of each other um, various different options and then they all have that sketch and tune effect on those and if you zoom in, you have the crosses down here, and those also have the sketch and tune option on. So when you have your camera turned on, it would fly through the scene. And I put these plates here for the rain. So these actually, without going into a ton of detail, uh, I add some plates and then I pretty much hide those from the render and tell it that when I go into After Effects, it'll tell me where this is in 3D space so that I can add um, some other effects to it and it moves with the camera. But I'll turn this off for now. So it flies in, comes down to the approach of the cross and flies by. But it adds this cool, super cool drawn text effect, which I love. Okay, so then I just rendered these out as um, image sequences and imported those into the After Effects file and did some blending on those um, to get the, the same effect that we have in this final scene there. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I did was the explosion of the graves, and it's a little bit more complicated, but I'll go through it a little bit um, with you. So if you take certain shapes and different things and objects, you can then use a fracture uh, object and split those up. So uh, I won't go through how I really did this one. I'll just show you how it all works. But I basically took these, added a uh, Veroni fracture to it somewhere up here. Maybe MoGraph and the fracture object, and then you can tell it to explode. And I'll go through that really quickly in just a minute. But um, basically, uh, use these spheres that you see um, and just had them slowly move and bump, basically bump into these gravestones so that they would um, break at a certain spot. 
and really whatever um, that tombstone hits is what's going to explode so that it would leave these pieces here. So if these were never touched by anything, then they, they don't fall apart. And then you have the slow motion effect. So what I would do is uh, create the explosion and then um, change my time in my project settings. You can go to edit and project settings and I would change my dynamics time to 10%. So if I change this to 100, this is what it looks like in real time. And with the song, that's just not nearly as cool. And for some reason, when I would change it to 10%, it would explode out really big. And it just looks much more epic by this like slow motion vibe. So how does this fracture thing work? This is kind of a cool looking and it's fun to play with. And this just shows you um, what Cinema 4D can do I and mean, really just the surface of it. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just show you real quick. I'm just gonna make a plane and then I'm going to make a uh, sphere and we will just move this up here. And this is again, just the basic operations for how this works. So I would click on my sphere, I would add the uh, MoGraph and this fracture object. And I would put my sphere into the fracture object and it splits it up in these pieces. And I can tell it, I can click on the fracture object, go into object and probably change a lot more, give it a lot more subdivisions. I would click on sources and then you have this uh, point generator down here and I could just say, uh, I could probably bump this up to you know, a lot more, a lot higher number there to get a lot more pieces. And it's pretty random. Then you can go through the seeds and change different things. There's so many things you can do with this, but this is really just the basic of it. Um, so then I would need to tell it uh, that it's a dynamic object and that the gravity that is uh, sort of default in your scene is going to affect this object. So I would right click on my sphere and I would tell it it needs to be dynamic. So I'm going to go to simulation and do rigid body. And if I hit play, let's see what happens. So now you can see that it just falls through the floor. So you can see that it just sort of falls to the floor. And what's happening is that they're all falling at the same time. So they're not, they need something to interact with so that they break apart. So let's add uh, another object to this floor. So I'm going to add a collider object. So I'm going to go to simulation and collider and I'm going to hit play. And so it stops and they're all still stuck together. So now you can see it's falling and hitting the ground, but it's not breaking into pieces. And I think we do need to put it on the actual fracture object. So let's click on the sphere and drag it up to the fracture object there. And let's see what happens when it hits the ground. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that while I moved it. So let me pull the sphere back up into space and hit Okay, so it's interacting a little bit more with the ground, but we need to change a few more things inside of our rigid body. And I believe we need to go to individual elements because it's, it's seeing this as a bunch of different pieces. We need to tell it um, affect all these elements. So we're gonna hit play and boom, it just shatters into pieces. Uh, you can do tons of different things. You can go into your uh, your rigid body and change a lot of your settings. So the, frac the friction I can make you know 90% so that it doesn't really, uh, it's kind of piles up a little bit more. Even your plane, you could change that friction to be, um, a lot more so it looks a lot heavier than it really is let's see if we just bump that up to 100 so that's pretty cool or you could have it you could take your plane tool stretch that out change your friction to you know 10 percent and it kind of slides like it's hitting a super slippery floor so so that's really the the idea behind it is i would have something um, instead of this falling in space i would have something hit it to make it explode and uh, and then it created that grave that grave effect. So so then rendered that out, and then I would put that into After Effects and uh, apply a lot of the same effects. So that that flashing opacity that we have, and um, some different blending modes on that uh, to create that same look. So the other scene that we had in here were these um, uh, keys that were floating up, and this was basically just adding some objects to an emitter. Uh, I don't want to go through that too much. Uh, Cinema 4Ds can be a bit overwhelming, but basically just make an emitter tool and uh, add a, you can add various objects to it so just to show you a quick example is i would go to simulate and particles and emitter and so this is basically just like a, a particle system um, cinema 40s native particle system and then you can add uh, various objects into that so let me just delete this here so i could throw in really any any object that you want uh, but the more pieces that are going to be inside that emitter will you know if this has a ton of different um, shapes and polygons and stuff on it then it will slow that emitter down. But I could go to emitter and show objects and then I have this um, thing spitting out these different spheres. And so that's basically what I did is had the keys um, launching out of this thing and just doing a bunch of different rotating and stuff to create that um, sequence where the keys were, were floating up. So 
uh, again, drop that into After Effects and piece it all together. And I believe that really covers about it. And this fire was just a, a um, some stock footage that I had that I shot a long time ago. Use that in there and uh, and then made our way through the entire composition. So that's about it is once I get out of uh, Cinema 4D and render these uh, image sequences and drop them in and add some blending modes, then really that's, that's the bulk of the project. So we've covered most of the uh, tips and the tricks and the techniques that I would use to make up this entire project. It really matters adding those little details about the uh, flickering backgrounds and the displacement map, like all that stuff just really adds up once you start adding it all together. Um, so I hope there was something inside of this tutorial that you can use and apply to your next project. We, uh, we appreciate the support. Thanks for being a part of the group. If you're not a part of our Facebook group, if you're just finding us on YouTube, um, then click down in the link below uh, and you'll find, uh, you'll find our Facebook group. We, we look for inspiration and we're always sharing uh, what we're working on. So it's a group, good group to be a part of. Thanks again and we will see you on the next one.